I'm Ainsley Simpson, the CEO for the Infrastructure Sustainability Council of Australia. ISCA supports almost the entire infrastructure value chain, right from source through to conversion and then ultimately end of life. ISCA has worked with industry to develop the IS rating scheme into a credible third party assured framework for measuring sustainability performance. ISCA, or then the Australian Green Infrastructure Council, was founded uh, at the request of lots of volunteers. I was involved in the trialling and launching of a similar rating scheme in the UK called CQOL and the idea was to uh, replicate potentially a, uh, a rating scheme which encourages and rewards projects for going beyond business as usual. There was an idea at the time that green meant certain things to certain people and the rating tool itself was demonstrating a way of moving just beyond the environmental considerations into some of the social and governance areas as well. How do you deliver infrastructure that has two aspects? First of all, it, it must be resilient, it must be able to adapt. Infrastructure is a great enabler, so it's important that we consider infrastructure's role in city and regional resilience and exactly how that infrastructure will enable communities to respond to specific shocks and stresses. Industry was pretty lukewarm. Of course, you, you, you realise that the infrastructure rating tool is an industry design tool, industry prepared tool for industry. But there was a decided lack of interest by industry. Industry was a little sceptical about the value of the tool itself, how much work was going to be involved in actually getting a rating and the actual outcomes that would be driven by the rating process. In its early days, there was much the same sort of reception from, from government. It was hard to get those bureaucrats to understand that it, it wasn't aimed necessarily at the governments, but it was aimed at the construction companies and the, uh, the, the deliverers of infrastructure to actually put it in their culture in terms of bidding for projects and delivering outcomes that, that they could then skite about in terms of increasing their, their value in the community and that would reflect through to their share value and so on. We had the ideas and we, and we had the um, framework of what we wanted to create, but at the end of the day we needed a few passionate people who were ready to put up with the hard yards, secure funding, um, secure government backing, secure industry backing. I think the challenge until relatively recently has been around making the tools something that is user friendly. The one thing that um, was really useful was actually piloting the tool on live projects so that um, project teams, organisations and uh, AGIC could then understand uh, some of the areas where additional effort or perhaps guidance was required. It was really visiting the agencies and it was sitting down with those people and saying this is what the tool does, this is what the tool can deliver for you. We, we became a, a member-based organisation which is essentially how we got the bulk of our funding and also the Australian Federal Government provided enough uh, money to be available for developing the tool. The most critical thing was the passion of the people involved. And over time that meant that we built a very capable pool of uh, in-house uh, experts. The best way to gauge the, the current value of the tool was in, in 2013 when I joined the board, the total value of projects that were registered, i.e. people who wanted to take up the tool and, and measure their sustainability performance, was $3 billion. At the end of 2018, the total value of those projects was $100 billion. IS version 2 has introduced a new category for resilience. The resilience credit will change practice fundamentally by providing a framework for people to understand and explore issues that haven't actually been considered to date. We know how critical these pieces of infrastructure are. We know what happens when an airport shuts down for an hour, let alone a day. We know what happens if, uh, if a pipeline's not providing gas into a major network in Melbourne. You know, businesses shut down. There's not a lot of point in, in building um, something that we now can measure and say that's a really sustainable bit of infrastructure if we know that it completely lacks resilience. You measure what's important because what gets measured gets managed and that's how you drive better outcomes. It's just a massive step change. The fact that the ISCA tool is now going to continue to evolve over time, that we have a framework that will allow us to understand better the risks and opportunities for each of our infrastructure sectors, it's really exciting. Mm -hmm.